but let's just jump in, right? So before we get to the Twitter Apple Wars that are starting, um, let, let's, uh, let's a quick, uh, I just saw a quick story about Iran that I want to update you. You know, we always try to do that. Um, so uh, last week, I think it was late last week, the niece of Supreme Leader Khamenei, the niece of Supreme Leader Khamenei uh, in Iran, uh, basically went on video criticizing the regime, supporting the protests, supporting the young girls, um, and, uh, and, and condemning Khamenei and condemning uh, his regime. Uh, you know, supposedly uh, yesterday she was arrested, she was detained, and, uh, and in spite of, you know, her, the fact that she is a um, part of the family, if you will, uh, she's the niece of the Supreme Leader. She is now uh, in jail. Uh, they've already, the Iranians have already arrested 1,500 people. Uh, they have uh, death sentences on 21 of them. I don't think they've, uh, they've uh, executed anybody yet. I think there's a, an, a, some kind of uh, appeal process. Um, and, uh, but it, it, it is... Uh, uh, 1,500, not 15,000, 1,500 people have been arrested. And, uh, you know, we'll see if, uh, you know, how this all evolves. So that is kind of the latest from the Islamic Republic of Iran. I think the United States is playing Iran today. I hope they thrash him. Um, and, uh Yes, uh, hopefully the demonstrations will continue. Uh, quick on China, uh, no real new update. There's still a lot of talk about the unprecedented nature of the demonstrations. Still a lot of talk, uh, I think, on, on Chinese social media. Chinese police are stopping people in the street, and um, uh, Chinese, Chinese police are stopping people in the street. Uh, They're checking cell phones. They're also from what I can tell, in, in the areas where the demonstrations were on Sunday, but from what I can tell, I saw a news story that said that they're actually now hunting down the people who are at the demonstration. So they are actually going to their homes, uh, and uh, I don't know if they're arresting them, detaining them, or what they're doing, uh, or just harassing them, or just searching them. But, but there is a concerted effort by the regime in China to clamp down on this and, uh, and, and, and not allow this to develop and not allow this to get bigger. Uh, so uh, all I can say is my, 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 my mind, my heart is with uh, the Chinese and, um, uh, and, and I, hope, I hope they withstand whatever it is that is gonna be inflicted, uh, inflicted on them. Uh, all right, let's see. Okay, so let's jump into um, uh, uh, Twitter and Apple. Just a bewildering story, in my view. Just uh, uh, you know, a little, a little crazy. So uh, you know, Twitter's struggling. It's losing money every day. Uh, Elon Musk has already talked about the possibility of bankruptcy. It's um, it ha this still does not have any kind of uh, uh, standard for objective moderation of the platform. It hasn't announced anything uh, really with regard to that. Uh, it is, uh, it is uh, losing advertisers. Uh, it is, so it is uh, losing revenue. The uh, pay for the check mark, um, which uh, Elon Musk started, uh, has not really uh, done much or gone anywhere. Uh, you know, we'll see. He says he's gonna relaunch it on Friday. They suspended it for a while. They're willing to find it. Maybe that'll generate significant revenue. It's still to be determined. Um, you know, the, obviously he's trying to switch the model from advertising to uh, to some kind of subscription model. We'll see if that works. In other words, and and it, Musk is trying to make the platform better, introduce new features, uh, make it more robust, uh, make it more competitive. Uh, bring real innovation to Twitter. So he's trying to do a lot of good things and trying to do a lot of significant things. And he's also trying to bring, I think, some more visibility, some more transparency, some more objectivity to the moderation. But he hasn't done that yet. So far, as I've said in the past, moderation basically is at uh, Elon Musk's whim or at the whim of polls that he takes. 
so uh, this is where we are. And then uh, Elon yesterday decides that he doesn't have a big enough challenge. He doesn't have a, a, a big enough, uh, um, you know, a, a problem on his hands. He decided to basically go on a PR war against Apple, the largest company in the world, the largest uh, uh, by market cap, uh, the largest tech company, a company that has a billion uh, people using its platform on which many of those people could use Twitter or not, if Apple decided not, um, and, and to engage in a war. Now, now, it could be that he thinks he would beat Apple. That's, that's quite possible, but hmm, one has to wonder. And also, one has to wonder about the timing of this. Uh, again, he's got a lot of his hands. He's tweeting up a storm. He doesn't stop. He's constantly on Twitter. Uh, reminds me of a president who uh, spent more time on Twitter than governing the, company, the country. Is this really the best way to run Twitter, to, to, to get Twitter on the right track, to get Twitter to where it needs to be, which we all want it to be hugely successful? So first, um, Elon Musk complained about the fact that um, you know, he started about complaining of the fact that, uh, um, you know, that Apple has is, is almost completely stopped advertising on Twitter. Now, this is not just true of Apple. A, a significant amount, two-thirds, I think, of the advertising on Twitter have withdrawn, kind of waiting to see what Musk does with it. And I think the extent to which they've withdrawn and to the extent to which they are wait and hold is to a large extent Musk's fault. He hasn't really conveyed in clear, objective terms what the policy is going to be. So he started by complaining that uh, uh, Apple, uh, and Apple, I think uh, Apple's total spending on Twitter was, I don't know, $30 million this year or something like that, which is not a huge amount of money in the big scheme of things. So again, why, why go after Apple? It's, it's not exactly the biggest uh, advertiser on Apple, but, you know, obviously, obviously it is an advertiser and they were true. Then he started complaining about the fact that Apple supposedly, he claims, is withholding, uh, has threatened to withhold Twitter from its app store. And they won't tell him why, supposedly. Now, who knows if that is, uh, if that is true or not, uh, what that exactly means or not. But Apple, of course, is a private company, has every right to decide what's on its platform and what is not. Right? And... Uh, the nice thing about Apple is they're staying quiet. They're not saying anything. This is all coming from Musk, who's behaving, I think, like a little child uh, who's not getting, uh, is not getting his favorite toy and is uh, bitching and complaining instead of actually putting his head down and actually doing the work uh, necessary. Now, it is true that if Apple blocked Twitter from its app store, that would be pretty horrific for Twitter. That is a lot of users. Uh, that could potentially, you know, destroy Twitter. Uh, so uh, this is a big deal. And because it's a big deal, and this is business, one wonders whether the right approach is to antagonize a major, call them supplier, vendor, I don't know exactly how you would call them, um, customer, a, Antagonize them. What is the point exactly? Public pressure on Apple? Really? Apple's not exactly known as a company that responds to public pressure. Musk needs Apple more than Apple needs Musk. Now, it turns out that there is a history here that uh, Musk has been complaining about Apple now for years. Uh, Musk has been complaining about everything Apple's done from, from uh, the fact, supposedly, since uh, uh, Scott, the CEO of Apple, um, sorry, uh, Cook, <laughs> Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, kind of didn't take a meeting with Musk when Musk was trying to get Apple to invest in Tesla. And uh, Apple refused to invest in Tesla and didn't even take a meeting, uh, or at least Tim Cook didn't attend the meeting when Musk was trying to raise money from Apple. Then uh, the fact that Apple 
uh, throughout the last, I think, five years or so, has been poaching engineers, has been hiring engineers away from uh, Tesla, has made uh, Musk unhappy, uh, although he claims that they only get the poor engineers, they don't get the really good engineers. They, they get the engineers, they can't cut it in um, at Tesla. And if that's the case, why is he upset, right? Uh, it's, uh, it, it's 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 it, it's helpful to him. It cleans out the go the, the the not so good people. Um, so uh, Musk needs Apple as an advertiser. Musk needs Apple in order to appear on its platform. Uh, Twitter is bleeding uh, of the five point one million dollars of revenue uh, in uh, in twenty twenty one. 4.5 came from advertising, so they need advertisers. There's, they're an anim he's trying to diversify the model, but you don't get to these numbers by selling check marks. That's not going to replace the advertising. Why are you antagonizing your largest uh, customer? Now, you could argue, well, because Apple is threatening, Apple is doing all this stuff. Okay. But then, uh, you know, so, so Musk is just letting the world know that Apple is behaving in this way. Apple, I assume, is trying to do what it sees is its in its best business practices. Um, at the same time, but then Musk launches a whole new attack on Apple. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, uh, where is this? Uh, I've got this here. Yeah, Musk then, he shifted the attack on Apple. And he talked about, ooh, that Apple has a secret 30% tax on everything you buy through their app store. Well, first of all, it's not a tax. Secondly, it's not secret. We all know that uh, every app, every app out there that uses the app to charge you money in the first year of the use of that app, Apple gets 30% of every revenue they, any revenue they accumulate. They uh, charge you. Uh, after the first year, it drops to 15%. This is an agreement, a contract that Apple signs with every Apple Store vendor. If you don't want to sign the agreement, fine. You don't appear on the Apple Apple Store. Uh, it's not a secret deal. It's so unsecret that Apple has been sued about this uh, by what was it the game as a game uh, game company that sued Apple over this, and indeed, uh, you know, it's gone to the courts. A suit on antitrust ground, of course. Right, which Musk is now supporting. Right, that they should be they should be uh, attacked or prevented from doing this on antitrust grounds. So Musk is using using antitrust in order to go after his enemy Apple. Uh, and uh, Fortnite, thank you. Fortnite is the game. I can't remember what's the name of the company that makes Fortnite. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, so Apple charges thirty percent. It's again, oh, Epic. Epic is the name of the game company. Epic. So. Um, Epic filed the suit. Epic lost, mostly. Most of the suit where they lost. It's now an appeal. The Biden administration, Justice Department, has joined Epic in the appeal, supporting Epic, going after Apple for antitrust reasons. So Apple's under attack. Uh, the courts are going to decide whether it can sustain this 30% deal or not. Apple uh, has exclusivity, if you will, quote, monopoly power over the idea that um, all apps on the, app, the, the iPhone have to be downloaded through the App Store, although that's not true, completely true, because I know I've downloaded some stuff off of websites. Uh, but, um, you know, you can't, you can't have third-party app stores that sell you Apple apps. And Epic is challenging that on antitrust ground. The Justice Department is challenging that on antitrust ground. We'll see how the courts rule. I think it's in front of the Eighth Circuit. Um, but we know, or I am at least, as I think most of you know, I'm against antitrust on principle. I denounce antitrust on principle. I condemn anybody who uses antitrust to improve their business. Uh, and, and in that sense, I condemn Epic. I condemn Twitter, I can, or, or Elon Musk in this case, condemn everybody who's trying to use, and, and I condemn the people who went after Microsoft when they did. That includes Mark Andreessen. Um, but that's exactly what Elon Musk is doing. He's siding with the, um, I think, the bad guys here. 
Um, anyway, it's sad to see. It's sad to see. As you know, I kind of have gone through not thinking much of Elon Musk, thinking very highly of Elon Musk, and now thinking a lot less of Elon Musk. Uh, and, and this adventure on Twitter is not making him look good. I think it's making him look frantic, like a child. He's whiny. He's emotionalist. Um, and, uh, you know, it's sad to watch. It's sad to watch. He's, uh, my opinion on Elon Musk has gone through a roller coaster, partially because he is a roller coaster. I think what happens even when he says good things, it's kind of emotionally driven. He doesn't have a cohesive philosophy to guide him through. There's a lot of pragmatism there, sadly. So in certain areas, he can plan long-term and can really think in terms of long-term. Twitter has completely bamboozled him partially because he's clearly overpaid, significantly overpaid, and uh, he can't get out of it. And uh, we'll, see, we'll, see, uh, we'll see what else happens. Um, Apple, Apple is not banning him for bringing Donald Trump and Kanye back. I mean, Apple has Paulo on it. And Paula, I think, is now owned by Kanye. So, um, it's, um, I, I, I don't think it's limited to that. Apple is probably just saying, be careful, because if, you're, if, if, if the place becomes, if Twitter becomes a zoo in which people are attacking one another and, and, and uh, bad things are happening on it, we might withdraw the app because we have uh, standards, and you know you can go to the you can go to the app store and you can see what their standards are. There's uh, of course they're not completely objective either, uh, and uh, and they have done some questionable things. But it's a business; they can do what they want. They can do what they want. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.